Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Meet the BOA Chair, a webinar on accountancy education updates. We will now begin the program by a doxology and to be followed immediately by our national anthem. Kailan, kailan man, ngalan mo 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, our MC for today's event. Professor Gerard Q. Carpizo, Program Chair of Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, FINMA, University of Pangasinan. He is also the former Assistant Vice President for Professional Development for Fiscal Year 2017-2018 for PICPA Pangasinan Chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, our host, Professor Gerard Q. Carpizo. Thank you very much. Uh, good, okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Meet the BOA Chairman, organized by the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Pangasinan Chapter in Northern Luzon Region in cooperation with Regional Association of Business and Accounting Educators of Region 1 and Natural, National Federation of Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants, Region 1 and Cordillera Autonomous Region. Once again, good morning to all. I will be your moderator and host for today, Gerard Carpizo. May we also acknowledge the participants from various schools and it is represented or they are represented by their respective deans department heads, and faculty members, starting off with ABE, International College of Business from Urdaneta City, Pangasinan, Colegio de Dagupan from Arellano Street, Pantal, Dagupan City, Divine World College of Lawag, Ilocos Norte, Kingfisher School of Business and Finance, Dagupan City, Lorma College, uh, Lorma Colleges, or Bistondo San Juan La Union, Lyceum Northwestern University, Tapuac District, Dagupan City, Lyceum Northern Luzon, Ordeneta City, Pangasinan, Mariano Marcos State University from City of Batac, Ilocos Norte, Northwestern University from Lawag City, 
We have also Pangasinan State University from different campuses. We have Bayangbang, Lingayen, and San Carlos City, Pangasinan. And then we have Pan Pacific University, North Luzon, Tayug Campus, Pangasinan. Pass College, Alaminos City, Pangasinan. Perpetual Health College of Malasiki, Pangasinan Campus. Pangasinan or Philippine College of Science and Technology, Nalshan Kalashaw, Pangasinan. We have Finma University of Pangasinan, Arellano Street, Dagupan City, along with Finma Yupang College of Urdaneta, Nankayasan Urdaneta. We have St. Luke, uh, St. Louis College from San Fernando, La Union. And then we have St. Louis University from Mary Heights Campus, Bakaking, Baguio City. University of Baguio from General Luna Road, Baguio City, and University of Cordilleras from Governor Park Road, Baguio City. So good morning to our friends in Baguio City. And then we have San Carlos College from Mabini Street, San Carlos City, Pangasinan. Senor Tesoro College from Calasiao, Pangasinan. The Great Plebeian College, Alaminos City, Pangasinan. University of Eastern Pangasinan from Binalonan, Pangasinan. We have University of Luzon, Dagupan Main Campus from Perez Boulevard, Dagupan City, University of Luzon, Uzurobio Campus, Pangasinan. And then we have Urdaneta City University, San Vicente West Urdaneta. And last but certainly not the least, we have Vergen Milagrosa University Foundation. Once again, good morning to everyone. We are honored and pleased with your gracing our event for today. So for our opening remarks, may I call our sectoral representative for education of PICPA Northern Luzon Region, Dean Renante Balucati. Thank you, Sir Gerard. Our guest who will be formally and properly introduced later the PICPA National Vice President for Education, the Chaired Regional Office One Director, the PICPA National President, the Honorable Chairman of the Professional Regulatory Board of Accountancy, PICPA Pangasinan Chapter President, Madam Maria Lourdes G. Aki, and the Inter Board of Directors of PICPA Pangasinan Chapter, our partner organizations, the Regional Association of Business and Accounting Educators of Region 1, which is coordinated by our Shared Education Super Supervisor, Sir uh, Ricky Serra, the Executive Officers of NFJP Region 1 in TAR, and of course, the PICPA Northern Luzon Region, headed by our Regional Director, Madame Milagros M. Cardona. Our benevolent sponsors, all participating schools, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning and welcome to the webinar on accountancy education updates. We are indeed grateful to the God Almighty for giving us this opportunity to convene online with our guests. Our webinar this morning is expected to give updates on accountancy education. Purposely, we intended this webinar to obtain information right from our resource speaker that will be used in programming our accountancy programs. We all know that accountancy program curriculum had undergone major revisions with the uh, effectivity of CHED Memorandum Orders 27, 28, 29, and 30 series of 2017. And all of us became busy in preparing our revised curriculum at the onset of school year 2018-2019. Perhaps some had been busier even prior to that school year. Now, after two or three school years, it is time to revisit everything we did. It is time to check the relevance of our programs and policies that we initially implemented. May this webinar be of great help to all of us, ladies and gentlemen. May all of us remain stronger and may all of us remain fruitful partners of the state in the task of nation building and development 
and in nurturing competent, virtuous, productive, and well-rounded professional accountants. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. May God bless us all and good morning. Okay, so thank you, Dean, for that warm welcome. To start the ball rolling, may I, uh, may I call our first, uh, uh, may I call our first, uh, um, uh, first individual who will be uh, introducing our first speaker. So to introduce our first guest of honor this morning, may I request Dean Chofila Albay from College of Management and Accountancy of Finma University of Pangasinan. Thank you, Gerard. A pleasant day to you, our esteemed guest speakers, colleagues, future CPAs, and fellow participants. As we face a new day and age where the new normal consistently evolves and clings to our day-to-day -day lives, we must learn to adapt and remain resilient as we have ever been to survive. It is with determination, perseverance, discipline, and love for learning, which would enable us to move on and move forward. Our speaker is a living embodiment of this. She is, without question, a luminary in the accounting profession. Dr. Milagros E. Miranda Cardona is a certified public accountant. She obtained her bachelor's degree in accountancy at Far Eastern University and her master's degree in resource management, agribusiness, and business administration, major in financial management in Bengal State University and St. Louis University, respectively. Her highest educational attainment is when she was granted with her doctorate in philosophy management by St. Louis University. Indeed, Dr. Milagros Cardona already cemented her competency and qualifications in the field of accounting. Adding another notch to her already illustrious belt, she has been a recipient of numerous and notable awards, such as the Professional Award for Professional Excellence granted by St. Louis University, the Outstanding PICPA member and other presidential and leadership award given by GAPA and PICPA. It cannot be gainsaid that she epitomizes excellence as she is honored by different peers in our profession. She had been at the helm of the PICPA ship as the regional director of Northern Luzon chapter from July 2007 until June 2020. Her impeccable leadership and selfless service to the organization is absolutely noteworthy as she is appointed as Vice President for Education from July 2020 until July 20, 2021 by Pic Needless to say, Mam Cardona is truly a marvels to behold as her myriad of accomplishments are astounding and incomparable. Her contributions to the academy should not be overlooked for she had co-authored books in government accounting and auditing and assurance principles and prepared instructional materials for basic bookkeeping and accounting for nine barangay livelihood enterprises. She is currently engaged as a teaching faculty at St. Louis University and Alpha Cruces College, an accounting practitioner, as well as an accredited member of DTI's Go Negocio training program. I, for one, is truly in awe of Mam Cardona's passion for professionalism and education. May she continue to inspire others to become exceptional in everything they do, whether in the field of academe, corporate, public or private practice, or simply studying to pass the Certified Public Accountant Licensure Examination, that everything can be achieved through hard work and unwavering dedication. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give 
the most warm and virtual welcome to Dr. Milagros E. Miranda Cardona, CPA. Thank you, Dean Albay, but uh, may I have some correction? I'm not yet a doctor. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you very much. Honorable Noe Quinanola, Chairman, Professional Regulatory Board of Accountancy, Lope Bato Jr., National President, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Dr. Rogelio T. Galera, Director 4 of the Commission on Higher Education, Region 1, Dean Reynante Balucating, PICPA Northern Luzon Regional Sectoral Representative, Maria Lourdes Aki, President of the PICPA Pangasinan Chapter and its officers and members, PICPANs from the other chapters, deans, faculty, students, soon-to-be CPAs, guests, friends, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today, we are happy that in spite of the pandemic, we are here together joining this virtual activity. Meet the BOA Chair webinar on accountancy education updates. It is with a grateful heart to note that the partnership of the Professional Regulatory Board of Accountancy the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Regional Association of Business and Accounting Educators Region 1, the NJPA Region 1 and CAR are very strong. To the deans, faculty and students present here, I am sure you are all excited about the latest updates in accounting education and the latest about the incoming CPA licensure examination. While we are all disappointed that the continued spread of the virus has limited our ability to safely provide more in-person teaching, we continue to be excited about the learning and discovery in store for our academic community. Our faculty, teaching assistants, and academic support staff have been engaged in developing innovative and creative approaches to online learning. We look forward for a meaningful academic year, 2020, 2021 and beyond. As we continue to wrestle with extraordinarily demanding times, the path forward remains uncertain. But we are on this journey together and our commitment to each other's health will be our North Star as we carry out our mission of teaching and learning, discovery and service. For us educators, while the future remains unknown by working together to support and empower the education ecosystems in our communities, we can help establish the structures that our students will need to receive the quality education they deserve and bring stability in a time of uncertainty. More importantly, we need normal in education is calling us once more to review and meet other essential conditions that need to be met before diving into teaching and learning. Let us not forget Maslow before Bloom, which remains to be an important prerequisite if we want to have impactful learning in students, even in times of emergencies. Education is not the work of teachers alone. Collaboration and partnership play crucial roles in sustaining learning at this time of the pandemic. Faculties, parents, school leaders, and external partners have to work together to address the many challenging issues of remote learning. In the end, collaboration makes life challenges not necessarily easier, but more bearable. To our students, press on. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccess unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. 
when you teach or when you reach an obstacle, turn it into an opportunity. You have the choice. You can overcome and become a winner or you can allow it to overcome you and be a loser. The choice is yours and yours alone. Refuse to throw in the towel. Go that extra mile that failures refuse to travel. It is far better to be exhausted from success than to be rested in failure. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. With great challenges come great opportunities. Indeed, because of those challenges, your achievement will be all the more meaningful. We look forward to the continuing support. Uh, we look forward to support you in your journey. The world needs your talent and dedication now more than ever. We remain optimistic that soon we can all be together in person, creating a better and brighter future. For our graduates, and now preparing to take the CPA licensure examination. You have waited for so long, and I hope you made the most of the extra time to prepare. In closing, to all of you, my dear students, and soon to be certified public accountants, chase the vision, not the money. The money will end up following you. Remember to celebrate milestones as you prepare for the road ahead. And that is to become a certified public accountant. Good morning, everyone. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I am be, uh, indeed, I am deeply inspired but, uh, by that, by our first honor guest, Ma'am Milagros Cardona. I strongly agree that indeed together we can help establish the structure for our students and then with collaboration with family, parents, and industry partners, we can make the great challenge more bearable, especially to our, uh, especially with our new normal. And then what greatly inspired me also is to chase the vision and not just money. So thank you very much. Once again, Ma'am Milagros Cardona. For our next speaker, may I call the Dean of Colegio de Dagupan, School of Business and Accountancy, and currently our Vice President for Membership in PICPA Pangasinan Chapter, Dean Daniel Gonzalez. Good, good morning, my fellow PICPANs. My colleagues in the academic profession, my dear students, future CPAs, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am very much honored and privileged that I will be introducing to you our next speaker. Our next speaker is born and raised in La Union, and his inclination in the academe was greatly influenced by his parents, both retired public school teachers. He is a certified public accountant by profession and he is in accord with our mission. He holds a master's degree in business administration, major in finance, and a doctorate degree in philosophy. He is a product of a public school system reaping the highest academic honors and leadership awards. He was also a product of a prestigious school such as St. Louis University of Baguio City completing his degrees with Latin honors. Spanning of total of 15 years in the government service, he was appointed by our president, no other than President Rodrigo Duterte, as the director for last February 23, this year, 2021. He was previously the OIC of the Office of the Director for of the Commission on Higher Education, Regional Office One and held other positions at the commission, such as Chief Education Program Specialist and Education Supervisor too. Before joining the commission, he was a former budget specialist in the Department of Budget and Management and an administrative staff at the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, and also as a bookkeeper at the Armed Forces of the Philippines Educational Benefit Systems Office. 
In the field of academia as professor, he served the School of St. Louis College, teaching at the Graduate School Leadership and Management, also ethics and finance courses at the undergrad. He was also a former college instructor and handled basic accounting subjects, taxations, and management accounting at STI College and Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University of San Fernando La Union. He passed the Career Executive Service written examination of the Career Executive Service Board in 2018, passed the Career Executive Service Assessment Center in 2019, and CSB validation in 2020. Last January 2020, he represented the Philippine Higher Education System in the World Education Forum in London, England. Friends, our speaker, a loving husband, a good father of two boys, ladies and gentlemen, the regional director of the Commissioner on Higher Education Regional Office One, our speaker, Dr. Rogelio Galera Jr. To the officers of the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, headed by its national president, President Lope L. Bato Jr., and to the PICPA Pangasinan chapter, headed by its president, Ms. Maria Lourdes G. A. To our resource speaker, Honorable Chairman Noe J. Kenyanola of the Board of Accountancy, and to our colleagues from the Academe, together with our future professional accountants, a bright and learning-filled morning to all of you. According to Brian Tracy, those people who develop the ability to continuously acquire new and better forms of knowledge that they can apply to their work and to their lives will be the movers and shakers in our society for the indefinite future. Today, we are fortunate and grateful that the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Northern Luzon Region, and Pangasinan Chapter, in cooperation, of the Regional Association of Business Accounting Educators in Region 1 or RABE 1 and the National Federation of Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants Region 1 and CAR are espousing this free webinar entitled Meet the BOA Chairman Webinar on Accountancy Education Updates in order to keep us informed of the development of accounting standards, curriculum, delivery of instruction and board examination schedules. This event is even made more special because we will be hearing directly from the source, the Chairman of the Board of Accountancy himself, Honorable Chairman Noe J. Kinanola. I laud PICPA for this endeavor, a proactive move of the organization to fulfill its mission even in the face of the pandemic, to promote, uphold, and maintain high standards in the accountancy profession through continuing professional development of its members establishing local and international linkages, and promoting collaboration among members and higher education institutions offering the accountancy program. To our accounting educators, as a CPA myself, I fully understand the challenges an accounting educator has to endure in this new normal. In an actual setting, the pandemic has a huge impact in financial reporting in the auditing practices, among others, and this has a great bearing on how we teach accounting today. It is therefore a challenge to continue teaching accounting subjects through remote and blended modalities, and doing so requires an extraordinary level of innovation and dedication. For this, I salute our accounting educators for going the extra mile to be able to continue teaching in this extraordinary time. Your experiences today as accounting educators will serve as your empirical basis of your future actions to continuously improve and propel our profession. Let me also remind you that as accountants, we are expected to be not just technically proficient, but to also possess the soft skills needed to thrive and flourish in the actual field of work. 
as we move forward to the 21st century, our perspective in accounting education should change altogether to focus our vision in strengthening and developing better collaborations among, uh, among accounting educators, business education schools, and accounting students. As Henry Ford said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. We in CHED Region 1 pledge our support to PICPA and the business education professional organizations in our region. With the revival of the Regional Association of Business and Accounting Educators in Region 1 or RABI 1, a recognized professional organization of the Commission, we are looking forward to have a more efficient communication system and stronger partnership in conducting technical assistance, training and professional development programs to our CPA professionals and future professional accountants. Of course, with the active presence of the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants being the prime mover in upholding professional standards, ensuring continuous learning, and elevating the level of competencies of our accounting educators and future professional accountants, these are achievable. To end, let me highlight that the true essence of being professional is to be a good servant to his or her country. While it is true that passing the board examination and gaining a high passing rate are considered great achievements, it is in serving with passion, dedication, and integrity that gives our profession dignity and honor. Again, congratulations, PICPA, for this initiative and thank you for being one of the pillars in improving the quality of the accountancy education program. More power to you. I wish everyone to have a fruitful and meaningful learning session. Thank you. So thank you very much to Sir uh, Dr. Dr. Galera. I salute also our professors that it is a it is a difficult uh, task, particularly when online classes was first uh, conducted. But nevertheless, with strong collaboration with Jed, we've seen progress moving forward. We also appreciate the revival of RABE as this is a direct way for us educators to easily communicate with CHED. So once again, sir, thank you for that. And as, uh, as you have said also, it is serving in passion and in integrity that guides us to serve. So, so to keep the ball rolling, so may I continue to uh, continue with our honored guests. May I request Dean Henobeba Reyes, from College of Business Education of Lyceum Northwestern University to introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Sir Gerald. To start with, I just want to greet the people who grace this affair. To our distinguished and highly esteemed guests, honor and speaker, who will be properly and formally introduced later, our energetic and supportive director for of the Commission on Higher Education, Regional Office One, Dr. Rogelio T. Galera Jr., sir. Our PICPA National Vice President for Education and the dearest mother of PICPA Northern Luzon Region, Madame Milagros M. Cardona, the ever hardworking president of PICPA Pangasinan Chapter, Madam Marilu Ake, my fellow deans, members of the academic community, my dear students, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant welcoming and joyous morning. Today is an exceptional one. I am delighted to have been given the task of introducing one of the most prominent figures in the accounting arena on the occasion that has become one of the highlights of this year's administration of our dear president, Madam Maluake, meet the Board of Accounts of the Chair webinar on accountancy education updates for our students, our mentors, and our respective institution. Today's affair is graced by one special gentleman the epitome of empowered men and a great leader. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, 
majored in accounting at the Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology in 1986. He finished master in business administration at Central Scholar University, and now a candidate of doctor in business administration at La Consolacion University of the Philippines. After passing the CPA board examination, he joined Sisi Gores Vilayan Company and resigned after five years. And with two of his colleagues from SGB, they organized the Kilab, Kabilin, Bato and Company CPAs, a regional audit firm based in Mindanao. In 2016, after almost 25 years with QCB, he started his own firm, the Lope Laranjo Bato and Company, together with his five managers as founding partners. He has been in the public in the practice of public accounting and taxation since he became a CPA, a senior auditor of SGB, managing partner of QZB, and now as the chairman and the chief executive officer of Lope, Larano, Bato and Company CPAs, a member firm of the leading Eds Alliance Global with head office in Cagayan de Oro City and eight branches operating nationwide. In his almost 33 years in public accounting practice and taxation, he was able to obtain two global certifications, the Certified Forensic Accountant and the Certified Internal Control Auditor. While practicing his profession as a CPA at UCB and company, he concurrently led the Rural Bank based in CDO for 15 years, from 1997 to 2012, as its president and the chief executive officer. He has been very active with his, his professional organization, the Philippine Institute of CPAs, having served in various capacities until he became the youngest chapter president of Pangpikpa Cagayan de Oro, Misamis Oriental Chapter in 1996, and the National Vice President for Public Practice in 2009. He is likewise very active with the Association of CPAs in Public Practice, having served as the founding president of ACPAP Northern Mindanao Chapter and as a member of the ACPAP National Board for two terms. He was awarded, among others, Outstanding PICPA member in 2006, Honorary Lifetime Member of PICPA in 2010, Outstanding MSU IIT alumnus in the field of banking and finance in 2009, and the most outstanding director of the Rotary Club of Cagayan de Oro Mother Club in 2003. Because of his commitment and dedication to the organization, he was again elected to PICPA National Board in 2019 as the regional director representing Northern Mindanao region and serves as the executive vice president of PICPA. Effective July 1, 2020, our guest takes the helm of presidency with the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants. My friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us all be emboldened by his words of wisdom. Let us all welcome our very own PICPA National President, Mr. Lope Elbato Jr. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Actually, I requested President Malu not to introduce me anymore, but uh, she insisted for the benefits of our students attending this forum. Uh, thank you for that generous introduction, Dean uh, Hinoviva Reyes. 
my warm greetings and respect to our honored guest and resource speaker, Board of Accountancy Chair, Honorable Noe G. Kenyanola, who will be properly introduced later. Chair Regional Office One, Director Four, Dr. Helio Galira Jr. IGPA National Vice President for Education, Ms. Milagros Carduna. Pangasinan Chapter Officers led by Chapter President Ms. Maria Lourdes Agüe, Deans and Professors of the Regional Association of Business and Accounting Educators One or Rabbi One, Officers of the National Federation of Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants or NFJPIA of Region One and CAR, other PICPA leaders in the virtual room, PICPA members, CPA reviewees, students, friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Coping the realities under the new normal is no longer tough because we have been through the lowest moment of our, of our lives when this pandemic first hit us. At present, we already have, have high hopes knowing that the vaccine has already arrived and that vaccination has already been started. Most of us already believe that now is the time to recover. Now is the time to cope with and now is the best time to move forward. However, we are now again being threatened threatened by the sudden substantial climb of the daily cases of this COVID-19 because of the various variant of this of the vari virus that is said to be more contagious than the original strain of the virus. I understand that the Board of Accountancy is pushing its plan to proceed with the conduct of the CPA licensure examination this coming May 21 and is now seeking the approval of the IATF. I would like to inform you that PICPA strongly supports the possibility of holding the CPA licensure examination this coming May 21 because of so many reasons. We just hope and pray that the number of COVID cases will drop and the IATF will give the green light for the CIPALI to proceed. For our students, I can empathize with how you feel, waiting anxiously with all the mixed emotions, burnout and sometimes discouraged while waiting when the CIPALI or the CPA licensure examination is finally going to happen. But please allow me to talk about success, to ponder as we continue our journey, particularly for the students towards becoming a CPA. It is often said that success occurs when preparations meets opportunity. Now opportunities will undoubtedly pre present themselves with time but how are you treating yourself through all the time spent preparing to accomplish your goals? Are you giving yourself credit for the work and the energy it takes to become a more successful individual? A significant aspect of the success equation has to do with being good to yourself and treating yourself with kindness and encouragement along your life journey. It is important to celebrate all victories, large and small, on the journey towards fulfilling your dreams. It all begins with recognizing that you are a successful individual right now and your successes can only be, can only go up from here. Guys, simply having the determination to pursue your happiness your goals and your dreams is a massive success in itself. It takes an incredible amount of courage to wake up every morning 
and keep moving and keep motivating yourself to work towards the life you have always imagined living. Preparation is part of the success equation and your journey should be celebrated for success is not simply a destination. Success is not something that we arrive at one day. It has something to do with day-to-day -day choices, actions, and experiences, no matter how big or small they are. Success has to do, has to do with being true to, to who you are and how you choose to respond to every circumstance in your life. As we all know, every student at school aims to aspire to be successful in life. Successful, success is a dream of every student, but success is not achieved overnight. It is instead a long, steady success of hard work and commitment. Let me tell you that success is hidden in failures. Our mistakes and failures teach us how one can achieve greatness and success in life as someone has said that failure is, um, is a temporary delay, not a defeat. Success takes time to appear. So never lose heart at a brief pause of failures. Life is an adventure. Therefore, take risk in life because one who possesses the courage to face fears and risk becomes successful in life. Life is not smooth in it always. It is a curve path of, uh, it's a curved path of turbulence and trauma on the way leading to success. Success plays a vital role in the life of a person. We must know that success is not final or a complete stop, nor failure is fatal or did end. It is the courage to continue that counts. Our achievements and failures are not counted. What is measured in life is our determination and courage to stick around our goals. The secret of permanent success is the dedication and determination. The lack of dedication and commitment makes man comply with the world's forces and the circumstances that one encounters in life. A student needs to be like a steady rock. A student starts the journey of success from the process of learning. My dear students, don't forget that there are obstacles and hindrances on the way to success. It's your choice that will decide your success. Never choose an easy and comfortable path. The harder the, the circumstance, the more successful you can be. All great legends are the product of hard times. They have faced a hard time in life and history bears witness of thousands of great souls who suffered to an unimaginable extent during their lives. Those are the very souls who lead the world in the end. I'll tell you that being a student, we must be patient enough to face hard times, to keep you struggling, but keep on working hard. Your hard work will never go in vain and the efforts you make are counted. So, I, uh, so before I end my speech, I would like to leave you a very simple mindset my daughter had during her student life, which she said, and I quote, in every endeavor, always CPA, which means concentrate, pray, and achieve. Also, Barack Obama once said, and I quote, it took a lot of blood, sweat, sweat, and tears to get to where we are today, but we have just begun. 
My heartfelt congratulations to the men and women behind this forum that ensure success of this activity. Mabuhay kayong lahat. Good morning and stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much, President Lope. Uh, I strongly concur with your feelings, uh, Sir Bato. We did not expect that during our lifetime, we would experience a pandemic on this scale. So we empathize with the students who have anxiety in preparing for the board exam during this period of uncertainty. But nevertheless, we are greatly encouraged by your word, uh, President Bato. Success is in the day-to-day, -day, as you've said, uh, either small or big. And success takes in the appearance of courage. So courage is needed in, in a successful life. And I love how, uh, how your daughter articulated it. I love how she said that the mindset that you shared is a CPA. So concentrate, pray, and achieve. And also finally, uh, as professionals, as uh, fellow uh, PICPA members, we also look forward to some of the upcoming projects of PICPA National. So once again, thank you very much to our uh, president, PICPA National President. So at this juncture, may I request uh, our PICPA Pangasinan Chapter President, Maria Lourdes Ake, to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our guests. So may I request also to turn on the cameras by our esteemed guests to be recognized. So I will be calling them one by one. So first, uh, first would be our Vice President for PICPA National for Education, Madam Milagros Cardona. So Ma'am Aki. Okay. Um, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants Pangasinan Chapter of, awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Vice President Milagros M. Cardona, IPA National Vice President for Education, Fiscal Year 2020-2021. In grateful recognition of her presence as guest speaker during the Meet the BOA Chair webinar on accountancy education updates conducted on the 16th of March 2021 via Zoom. Signed by yours truly, Maria Lourdes Ake, President of Pikpa Pangasinan Chapter, Fiscal Year 2020-2021. So thank you very much, Ma'am Milagros Cardona. Next would be our Director of SHED Region 1, Dr. Rogelio Galera Jr. Uh, once again, Ma'am Malu. Okay. Um, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Pangasinan Chapter, awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Rogelio T. Galera, Jr., Director for Commission on Higher Education Regional Office 1, in grateful recognition of his presence as guest speaker during the Meet the BOA Chair webinar on accountancy education updates conducted on the 16th of March, 2021 via Zoom, Signed by yours truly, Maria Lourdes Ake, President, Ikpa Pangasinan Chapter, Fiscal Year 2020-2021. Thank you. And of course, our Ikpa National President, Mr. Lope Bato Jr. So, Again, Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Pangasinan Chapter, awards this Certificate of Appreciation to President Lope L. Bato Jr., PICPA National President, Fiscal Year 2020-2021, in grateful recognition of his presence as guest speaker during the Meet the BOA Chair webinar on accountancy education updates conducted on the 16th of March, 2021, via Zoom. Signed by yours truly, Maria Lourdes Ake, President of PICPA Pangasinan Chapter, Fiscal Year 2020-2021. Thank you, sir. And so once again, thank you very much uh, in sharing insights and updates to all our honored guests with regards to the accountancy profession and also, of course, in connection to education. Now, for, uh, for everyone with questions regarding the topic on updates on the accountancy education by our resource speaker, we will be having an open forum later where your queries and insights will be addressed. So for the meantime, let us reserve it for later. We also see some greetings and questions in our live feed in Facebook to our NFJP members, officers, other faculty members. So for everyone joining us, we appreciate your participation. So we now formally proceed to our webinar proper. May I request Dean Augustus Lambino of Kingfisher School of Business and Finance to introduce our guest of honor and resource speaker for this morning.
our distinguished guests for today's seminar, uh, PICPA National President Lope Bato Jr., PICPA Vice President Milagros M. Cardona, our Regional Chair Director Dr. Rogelio T. Galera Jr., Dean Renante Balocating, PICPA Northern Luzon Regional Sector Representative in Education, and PICPA Function Officers led by Chapter President Barilu Ake. To my fellow academic deans, programs chair, business and accounting professors of the various HEI in Northern Luzon, fellow CPAs in Pangasinan, students who are more than a thousand, I think, in the FB Live, who are keen, keen, keenly watching the FB Live. Good morning. As we await what is in store, what is in store for us from our indefatigable board of accountancy chair, we can only wish as for our CPAs, CPA examinees in Northern Zone this May 2021. Sana all. A number of examinees are wary since our bow chairs started last August 2018. It was a down to, downward trend in passing percentage similar to the stock market index as a result of COVID-19. But even before he took over, there was already a downward, downward trend since October 2016. So to our accountancy student, we cannot just lay the blame and defer taking the sepale because of our wrong impression that the current BOA is making the examination difficult. Just like us professors, similar to BOA, we provide assessment of the accountancy graduates' learning outcome. Our BOA chair stood firm that only examinees that meet the cutoff mark of 75% can use the CPA badge. We know that our FBT and taxation remain the challenging board subjects, among all others, based on the based on the result generated by the BOA. So today will be an important time for us to hear from the BOA chair, since we can be able to customize our mindset in what is expected in taking the CEPALE based uh, to, um, and preparing our student to the October 22, 2022 examination based on the revised curriculum. To our BOA chair, I'll again reiterate our millennial and say generation accounting student in Northern Luzon, permit wish, sana all sir. Our BOA chair has been with the academe. Thus, he is familiar how to prepare students to pass a CPA board examination. He previously served the University of San Jose Recoletos in the concurrent capacity as controller and director of the CPA Review Center, graduate school professor, then he became the president of Southwestern University before it was acquired by FINMA Corporation. Our BOA chair is a certified public accountant, placing 19 in the CPA board examination. He is also a professional industrial engineer, a licensed environmental planner. He finished his Bachelor of Science in Commerce, major in accounting, and, bio, and Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from the University of San Jose Reculetos, he graduated magna cum laude from both courses. He also earned his master's in management, graduating as most outstanding graduate and bachelor of laws at USJR. He took special studies at the University of Asia and Pacific, UANP, and earned a certificate in business economics with distinction. He completed his postgraduate studies, leading to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Business Administration, PhD, BA, at the University of San Carlos. He was once connected with CCIP Gores Bilayo and Company CPAs, where he was exposed to auditing companies belong to various industries. He, all, he also used to be connected with Lear Automotive Philippines, formerly United Technologies Automotive Philippines, 
where he held the position of plant manager for nine years, giving him a solid background in, the, in industrial management. He previously served as materials manager at Lear and as production control manager, accountant, and staff auditor in other companies. He is quite active in the professional organization of accountants, having served the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountant, Cebu chapter, as one of its past presidents. He was also a past national vice president for public practice of PICPA. In the last PICPA annual convention held in Bacolod City last November 2020, he was a recipient of the Outstanding PICPA Member Award. He will be again a special guest tomorrow for the Association of Certified Public Accountants in Commerce and Industry, ACPASE, in the launching of the two years to centenary of the accountancy profession. At present, he is the managing, managing partner of NG Kenyanola and Company CPAs and managing consultant of Kenyanola Consulting. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce our guest of honor and speaker, the chairperson of the Professional Regulatory Board of Accountancy, Honorable Dr. Noe G. Canyanola, CPA, PIE, ENT. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Augustus uh, Labino for that very generous introduction. Uh, first, uh, I would like to get, uh, you know, uh, authority to screen my, uh, to share my screen. Please. I'm still disabled. Hola, can, can you hear me? Uh Share as co-host, siguro, para ma 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 link ni sir. Ah, ito na, ito na, ito na. Ito. Okay. Okay, uh, so I think uh, the screen, my screen is now shared with you, right? Can you see the, the screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Yeah, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, um, we have Dr. Rogelio Galera Jr., Director of CHED. Uh, it's very interesting to know that you are also a CPA. So we speak the same language then. Mr. Lopi Bato Jr., uh, IGPA National President. Dr. Maria Lourdes Cardona, Regional Director of IGPA. Ms. Maria Lourdes Ake, President of IGPA Pangasinan Chapter. Dean's Program Chairs, Professors of Region 1, and uh, members of the National Federation of JPIA for Region 1 and the Cordillera Administrative Region. A pleasant morning to all of you. It was quite interesting to note uh, during the um, introduction that there are a lot of schools offering accountancy in Region 1 and the Cordillera Administrative Region. The list was a bit long. That means um, we have good opportunities uh, for students 
to become CPAs in that region, considering the numerous schools present there. And also, I admire the participation of the uh, various uh, deans and program chairs of the various schools in the region. You see, um, I, I was with the academe for a long time, about 40 years. So um, I started teaching in 1978. So that perhaps will tell you what my age is, but that doesn't actually matter so much because age is only a number, right? So for, uh, for those in the academe, see, teaching is very good. It keeps you young, right? So, okay. <laughs> now, um, yeah. Okay, uh, I would like to thank uh, the PICPA, Pangasinan chapter, for inviting me to this webinar. In fact, the situation we are in right now, uh, shall I say, is quite... Uh, fragile or so to speak, because we don't know what happens tomorrow. But according to President uh, Lope, you know, we just have, or and the other speakers as well, even if we're living in an uncertain time, we have to make most out of what we can do so that we can live life to the fullest. That's basically, um, you know, uh, one thing that would probably console us at this time uh, of the pandemic. There is nothing certain, and we just have to make the most out of what is there. Okay, uh, the, the, the topic that is being uh, given to me today is uh, education or updates in accountancy education. And uh, being from the Board of Accountancy, I think what matters most in this particular webinar are details of the uh, Certified Public Accountant Licensure Examination or what we call the CIPALE. Now, uh, first, okay, uh, let me just... Uh, let me just clear one thing before we proceed because uh, there are a lot of questions regarding this one. In 2018, or starting school year 2018, and that is when the first batch of senior high school graduates entered college, Chad came up with four accounting-related courses. That's Bachelor of Science in Accountancy, Bachelor of Science in Management. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. sir. Excuse me, sir. No way. Yes. Uh, can we please have uh, more volume, sir? We, we can barely hear Po. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No problem. That's all right. Okay, uh, mom, is that better? Is that okay now? Uh, medyo mahina pa rin po. Sandali. Uh, let us... Okay, uh, is that better now? Uh, sa akin po okay lang. Pero I don't know with the rest po, sir. Uh, yeah. Can you please give a thumbs up po? Uh, all the rest are listening. Yeah, can the others uh, hear me well now? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm, Much better. I'm... Okay, that's good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, okay. So let me go back to <laughs> this one.
Okay. Okay, as I was saying earlier, uh, I would like to clarify this because uh, there had been some questions that uh, were uh, sent to me. Um, starting school year 2018, 2019, that is, Chad came up with four accountancy-related programs. They call it accountancy-related programs. We have Bachelor of Science in Accountancy, Bachelor of Science in Management, in, um, Management Accounting, Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Accounting Information System. The previous BOA uh, administration, so to speak, actually, we're planning to uh, conduct examination for all these courses. Okay? That is why a lot of people were expecting that there will be board examination for all these four courses. However, that proposal was not materialized as the bill that they tried to file in Congress did not become a law. Therefore, I would like to tell you guys that as at this time, only graduates of BS accountancy can take the CPA licensure examination. The CPA licensure examination will only be once, unlike what was previously announced, that it will be a two-tiered exam wherein, you know, when you graduate, you take the examination and then two, two or three years after that, you take another examination. Again, that was not materialized because the bill that was filed did not become a law. So as at this time, only one examination will be taken by the uh, student in order to get the title certified public accountant. And it's not chartered accountant, it's not chartered public accountant, but still the same, certified public accountant because the prevailing law at this time is still Republic Act 9298, the Accountancy Act of 2004. I would like to tell you that um, the current BOA um, administration, so to speak, the current board of accountancy is also proposing some amendments to Republic Act 9298. In fact, uh, we will be having a public consultation come March 26 regarding uh, some changes that we want to implement some amendments to the law, that is. So if it's amendment, it's only some minor change and not really a major overhaul of the law. And uh, I would like just to tell you that it is also not our intention to give a two-third examination. It is also not our intention to give board examination to graduates of four courses, but it is still only with BS accountancy. Okay. So I would just like to clear that up before I proceed because I got numerous uh, inquiries regarding whether they will be taking up uh, a board examination, you know, graduates of management accounting and internal audit, whether they will be taking up a board examination when they graduate by, I think we're expecting them to graduate next year, March, April, May timeframe. Uh, that's... Uh, 2024, right? Now, uh, for the graduates of other courses, um, for management accounting, there's actually a CMA. For BSIA, there's a CIA. And for BSAIS, there is CAT. So I think, uh, you, you know, you can certifications, okay? But uh, in the Philippines, uh, or the, the certifications I mentioned earlier are actually foreign certifications, which you can take. But uh, for Philippine CPAs, we only uh, consider graduates of BS accountancy. Okay, so, so the
Okay, so the updates that I will be giving you today will be about uh, the uh, May 2021 and October 2021 Sipale. Uh, also, the resolution on the refresher course. Um, the revised syllabi on TOS, effective October 2022. And um, what about computerized examination? And since this is an, some sort of an education forum and attended by a lot of education uh, teachers or teachers in the academe, accounting teachers in the academe, I will, uh, we will touch base a little bit on accreditation of accounting teachers. So let's uh, first uh, discuss or uh, talk about the May 2021 and October 2021 Sipali. Uh, so what was originally announced, the May 2021 Sipali will be on May 16, 17, and 23. And that will happen in 13 centers. Okay, that's 13 centers already, including the uh, inclusion of Pangadian in Sambuanga del Sur and Rosales in Pangasinan. So the next time the examination will be held, there will already be examination in Rosales. And I think that is within your area, right? However, Okay, and that is the, uh, the program for the exam. The first day would be management advisory services and auditing. The second day would be taxation and regulatory framework for business transaction. And the third day would be financial accounting and reporting as well as the advanced financial accounting and reporting. However, um, PRC release resolution number 1329, rescheduling the examination for May and October 2021. And I think you are already aware of this. I would just like to reiterate this, that uh, the schedule or the new schedule would be May 16, 17, and 18. Okay, that would be three consecutive days of examination. And then for the October Sipale, that would be October 9, 10, and 11. Uh, one of the reasons why we're doing this is because one of the requirements in order to take the licensure examination at this time is that all examinees must present either an RT-PCR test result Showing, neg uh, showing negative result or a certificate of quarantine that before or prior to the examination, you were actually undergoing a 14 day self quarantine in your residence. And that is to be certified by your barangay officials. The question is, if we will have a break for one week, then are you going to present again an RT-PCR test result? So in order to avoid that, the examination was made for three consecutive days so that there will be no more break and therefore there is no need to present the test result when you come back the week later. The examination this time will not be the same as before. You see, uh, if you are familiar with the guidelines to examinees, the guidelines before was only two pages, but now I think it is now four pages because of the additional guidelines or additional instructions related to health protocols. Okay, uh, first, uh, foremost is uh, you have, you know, the, the examinee is required to wear and bring protective face masks and alcohol-based sanitizers. 
And then for identity, identity verification and pre-examination checking of examination paraphernalia, of course, the face mask will be removed for a while and then uh, put back, okay? A second is, um, I think, uh, one of the uh, instructions there as well is, of course, uh, body temperature shall be taken through thermal scanners prior to entry into the testing center. Um, those which have fever, cough, or cold shall not be allowed entry to the testing venue. Therefore, they will not be allowed to take the exam. With social distancing being... With social distancing being uh, practiced, there will only be eight examinees in a room. So there will only be eight examinees in a room. So in this case, we, we will probably, or we will be needing more rooms and more proctor. The examinees will not be allowed to leave the room until after the end of the examination for the second subject in the afternoon. Therefore, all examinees are required to bring pack lunch and they will be eating their lunch inside the room. Now, there are still other instructions there if that's quite uh, lengthy. So that is actually, or the one on the screen is actually the instruction that in addition to what has been stated, pursuant to memorandum number 68, series of 2020, the examinees are required to submit RT-PCR test results. Of course, that should be negative. So if pulling under the group stated in DOH memorandum 2020-258A, uh, those are the people who had been in contact with medical frontliners or had been in contact with uh, uh, positive or people with positive test results on RT-PCR test. Okay? or a certificate of quarantine. And uh, as what I've stated earlier, this is uh, a certificate that the examinee had been in self-quarantine for the last 14 days prior to the examination. And this certificate of quarantine is to be issued by the barangay health officials concurred or approved by the barangay chairman. So only those examinees with negative results shall be allowed to take the examination. So there is a link there which you can actually find more information. Okay, the October 2021 20, CIPALI is actually scheduled on 9, 10, and 16, but uh, as per the new resolution, it will be 9, 10, and 11. So that's the change. Okay, so that's nine, uh, 9, 10, and 11, that's it. I just repeated that slide, okay? So that is for the May 2021 and October 2021 Cipale. Now, question, will the May 2021 was true? I'm receiving a lot of messages. I'm receiving a lot of inquiries. I'm receiving a lot of text messages and messenger, you know, private messages, whether it's going to push through, considering that there is now, again, an, up, uh, an upward trend in the number of cases, especially in Metro Manila. Okay. Um, my answer to this is that we are preparing for the examination. But will it push through? It still depends on the situation as we go near the, uh, the examination time, okay? Ang um, daming nagme-message sa akin, sabi ko, hindi naman natin yan talaga nalaman, no? But the board is preparing and we are ready to conduct the examination. But if other factors are present, that will preclude us in giving or holding the examination, then we must think 
for the benefit of all stakeholders. Okay? Maraming nagsasabi, maraming, nag, maraming nagtatanong kasi sabi nila, uh, parang uh, they are waiting for uh, nothing. Okay? Wala na daw. They are losing hope. Talaga bang matutuloy ito? Um, you know, ang sabi ko lang is let's just be patient. Okay? Let's just be patient because um, hindi lang naman isa o dalawang tao ang stakeholder dito, kundi uh, as of the other day or as of last Friday, there are already 13,000 examinees who registered for the exam. Okay? So that, that's, the, uh, that's the latest. So kung talagang matuloy ang May 2021 si Pale, we will assess the situation. Uh, you know, we will assess the situation and we'll let you know as soon as possible. But the board is ready to conduct the examination. Okay? Okay, so let us go to PRC Resolution 46, Series of 2020 on Refresher Course. Marami ding tanong dito. Okay. Sa resolution na yan, uh, nakasaad doon. No? It's stated there that only XEIs are allowed to offer refresher course. XEIs must be accredited. And as an evidence of completion, a TOR must be presented. And the refresher TORs will only be valid for two years from date of issue. Okay, uh, let us, uh, you know, let us uh, get into the rationale why this resolution came about. I think all of you know that this refresher course had not been implemented well. Or, shall I say, it had not been implemented in accordance with law. Nakasaad sa Republic Act 92-98 or even during PD 692. Kasabi doon na only XEIs are allowed and that should be a 24-unit enrollment in the XEIs. Pero karamihan sa nangyari, mag enroll ang isang estudyante sa review center. Ang review center nagko-contact ng school na magbigay ng certification. That is a pure circumvention of law which we want to stop. Now, I personally investigated a school who continuously issued certificate of refresher course. Tapos yung school na yan, zero passing percentage consistent. Sabi ko, Ano bang, diba, ano bang karapatan niya na mag-issue ng refresher certificate? Yung mga graduates niya hindi nga pumapasa. Diba? So dito sa refresher course requirement for an HEI to be accredited, nagre-require na tayo na kailangan in the past five years ang average passing percentage ng isang HEI shall be at least 10%. Okay? That's not too much. But I think that would actually put an end to the practice of other schools na mag issue lang ng certification na hindi naman nag attend sa kanila ang estudyante. Okay? So, what is in the intention of this is that the HEI must conduct the class. The class must be a regular offering of the XEI and must be reported to Chen. Because at the end of the semester, a TOR shall be, shall be prepared by the school, signifying that the student had completed 24 units of enrolled subjects. Hindi yung mag enroll enroll tayo sa review center, hindi naman papasok, tapos pagkatapos, 
meron tayong certificate of refresher course. That does not actually, or my dear review is, that does not help you at all. Okay? Ang intention lang naman, itong refresher course is being or having been, uh, having failed twice, talagang matulungan kayo na papasa. So, hindi natin ito issue shortcut. Okay? Let us get all the help we can have. And the refresher course is one of them. Okay? Now, I think uh, as far as Luzon is concerned, I think University of Luzon already applied uh, for accreditation. And University of Cordilleras, by the way, is already approved. Okay? University of the Cordilleras, that is, right? is already approved to offer um, a refresher course. Okay, let's go now to the two years validity. Meron kasing ano, uh, when we were discussing, when we were tackling this resolution, merong mga inquiries na uh, nakuha niya yung refresher course niya, refresher certificate niya, way back in 2013. Tapos gusto niyang gamitin ngayon. Ako, diba? From 2013 until now, ang dami nang nagbago. Diba? Uh, will the 2013 refresher course, kung sakaling talagang tunay na refresher course yan, talagang maka, makatulong ba yan sa kanya? Okay? So that is why we're putting a cap on the validity of the refresher course. That it must be only valid for two years. Okay, let me make this clear. The refresher course resolution became effective on January 29, 2021. Because, well, that, that is actually a resolution series of 2020. We still have to go to publication before it will be effective. So, naging effective siya January 29, 2021. Would, and that would mean that before its effectivity, yung mga na-issue na refresher certificate ng schools na hindi accredited are still valid. Okay? They're still valid. But only valid for two years. After January 29, 2021, yung mga accredited schools lang ang pwede na mag-issue ng refresher TOR, ang sabi ko hindi certificate okay or the certificate is embedded in the TOR kasi meron namang uh, after the list of subjects and the grades of course there is a certification by by the registrar that those are really enrolled and earned in their school okay so after that is after January 29 kailangan yung accredited schools lang ang mag issue before January 29, acceptable pa yung na-issue ng ibang schools na hindi accredited. However, of course, take note. Uh, because of the unscrupulous practice, the Board of Accountancy has all the right to verify the veracity of the certificate, whether that is really taken in a real refresher course. Okay? Or giving, a, you know, let us just give it the benefit of the doubt. That is still acceptable. Ngayon, my, my question, if it is issued in 2019, di ba? 2019, dapat 2021, tapos uh, nag-take na sana siya on 2020, right? Sa ngayon, wala pang consideration yan. The two-year period is still in effect. But uh, I would like to tell you that because of the cancellation of the examination in 2020, we are thinking of giving it an extension, okay? But until such time as a resolution can be released, there is nothing that we can say yes, okay? Where we are actually contemplating, we're still discussing the merits of giving it an extension, but uh, I would not like to give you false hopes that that will really come out to be true, but we will try. Okay, so that is about refresher course. I hope that is already clear. Okay. 
Okay, punta tayo sa syllabi and TOS, effective October 2022, licensure examination for CPAs. As what I've said earlier, um, the first batch of senior high school graduates entered college in June 2018. When they entered college, BSA curriculum was changed with CMO number 27, issued by CHED, right? That's CHED Memorandum Order 27, Series of 2017. There were some minor changes actually in the curriculum in order that the curriculum can, can fit into what is currently required by industry. That actually, or that scenario necessitated the Board of Accountancy to revise the October 2022 CIPALE, so that's October 2022, because we expect that the first batch of senior high school graduates will graduate from March, April, and May timeframe, and therefore, they will take the October 2022 Sipali, most likely. Okay. May nagtanong, kung hindi daw siya dumaan ng senior high school graduates at mag-take siya sa October 2022, hindi ba daw siya subject to the new syllabi and TOS? Sabi natin dito, effective October 2022, Bago na ang syllabi and TOS for all examinees. So even if that was actually made because of the new curriculum, all those who, are, who belong to the old curriculum and would like to take the examination by that time will be subjected to the new syllabi and TOS because the board will not prepare multiple sets of examination differentiating you know those which pass those who passed senior high and those who did not pass in your high school okay so i think uh, that is also clear as far as that is concerned kasi meron siguro mga gustong magtake sa october 2022 pa na graduate before okay now, um, if you will take in October 2022 and you are a graduate or you did not pass through senior high school, then you will already be taking the examination under the new syllabi and TOS, which will be affected by that time. Okay? So that's, uh, that's it. So ano ang subjects uh, in October 2022? It would still be the same. But there are changes in the composition or there are changes in the topics listed under its uh, subject. So it will still be FAR, AFAR, Auditing, Management Services, Taxation, and RFBT. We will be releasing the final, you know, the final syllabi and TOS. Okay? And I would like to inform you that the syllabi and TOS or the syllabi was actually developed um, with the help of a focus, this focus group team or uh, that's based on an FGD, okay? Um, wherein people from the industry, from the academe, uh, actually were assigned in order to craft the new syllabi for each subject. So, uh, tapos ni-review na lang namin uh, we added, we subtracted as what we deem necessary under the circumstances. Okay? So, yun. Okay. So, therefore, ang sipali is all about the syllabus and the TOS. Okay? May nagsabi, may nagtanong sa amin, talaga bang nasusunod ang TOS? Of course. Kasi hindi... <laughs> Hindi naman ang mga questions na ginawa namin, we're preparing the questions based on the TOS. Kaya lang, I, I think uh, nagtanong sila kasi sa dami-dami ng mga topics listed there, mayroong mga topics na hindi lalabas. Okay? Talaga namang may chance na hindi lalabas ang ibang topics kasi ganito yon. For example, in one group of topics, mayroong 10 topics listed at saka mayroon lang 8 questions 
to be taken from the 10 topics listed, eh, meron talagang dalawa, at least, okay? Meron talagang dalawa na hindi lalabas. Okay? So, yun. Uh, at saka, hindi kami ang magpili kung ano ang lalabas. We are not the ones choosing. We prepare the questions based on the TOS. We encode the questions in the, in the test bank. And it is not us who will select which question will actually appear in the examination. It will be the computer extracting the questions at random based on our instructions that from this group of topics, you get eight easy, eight moderate, and two or four difficult. Okay, so meron din yung degree of difficulty, right? So yun, um, we have instructions to the computer that you get this number of easy, this number of moderate, and this number of difficult uh, questions. But uh, because of the numerous topics listed in a group of topics, then most likely may ibang topics na hindi lalabas. But it would be safe to study all the topics, okay? So that is really based, or the way we draft questions is really based on the TOS. Okay. So ang advice ko lang sa inyo, okay, this is... This is my only advice to examinees. How do you pass the examination? Of course, first, prepare, okay? When I was preparing for the board examination, I had this uh, mantra or motto. Success is not a matter of luck or genius. It is a matter of adequate preparation and unconquerable determination. Yun lang. Hindi lack, hindi genius, kung hindi preparation. Or success is perhaps 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Okay? So anong gawin natin? Okay, sabi ko kanina, merong subject syllabi ang each subject. Merong subject TOS ang each subject in the board exam. Dapat nakasynchronize ito sa school curriculum. So people in the academy, for, please make sure that what or the topics listed in the syllabi and the TOS are included in any of the subjects offered in the BSA curriculum. That should be part of the discussion. Meron kasing iba, uh, nakalista naman daw sa curriculum nila, pero dahil sa limited time, hindi na nadi-discuss. Um, you know, when I was talking to some GPIA uh, group before, they were telling me, what, we can, what can we do, sir? Um, it's actually a topic in our subject, pero because there is no more time, it's not anymore being discussed. Well, uh, at that instance, kasi di ba, marami namang holidays, maraming walang klase, pag may bagyo, whatever. Pero, um, that should be the responsibility of both the school and the students. If there is really a limitation on the school, then the students should make it up, right? The students are well aware of what the syllabi is. The students are made aware of what the TOS is composed of. The students actually know what the BSA curriculum is because they have gone through it. So if there is any mismatch, if there is any missing link between the syllabi, the CPA syllabi and the curriculum, the student must actually endeavor to learn it by himself. Or of course the school can, be, can help or assist in that particular regard. Kung ako ang mag-take ng examination, I would like to make an inventory of my knowledge based on the syllabi. So itong topic na to, okay, okay na ba ako ito dito? Okay, so make a checklist of what things you have learned that you have not learned based on the syllabi. And for sure, if you are covering the entire syllabus, for each subject, then I think 
the chance of passing is higher. Now, ngayon, ang dami naman kasing nagsasabi, pag ang topic ay mahirap, ay hindi na lang natin yan pag-usapan, hindi na lang natin yan bigyan ng pansin, ilagay na lang natin yan sa allowance. Di ba, mga reviewees? Ilagay na lang natin yan sa allowance. Kasi 75 lang naman ang hiningi. Di ba? E kung sakaling ang lahat ng topics or lahat ng lahat ng questions magiging allowance, edi anong lalabas doon? Di zero, right? Okay? So what what I mean here is don't take anything for granted. Okay? Don't take anything for granted. If there is any topic that you don't know, please learn it. Okay? Love it. Okay? So that you will be successful. Okay? So yan lang ang advice ko. Let's go to computerized examination. At this time of the pandemic, Siguro, um, you know, or even before the pandemic, by the way, the PRC had already started talking about computerized exam because that would really be more efficient compared to the paper and paper and pencil test that we have today. You see, um, when we prepare examinations, you can just imagine the tons of paper we are using. We're cutting down more trees in the process. We want to avoid that. However, implementing a computerized examination would not be easy. Okay? So, kailan magiging computerized? Okay. Mara dalawa kasi yung computerized. Uh, is it online or computerized? Meaning to say, when you answer the exam, it is using a computer as a medium. No? So, uh, regarding online examination, uh, parang we ruled it out na hindi pwede. Okay? Kasi sa online examination, what happens is that you can, you can actually be anywhere and you take the examination. You can be in your house. You can be in an internet cafe. You can be in the mall. You can be in a hotel or wherever. But we still believe or we are of the opinion that security is not enough. Okay? There is still the chance of cheating or the integrity of the of the examination is in question. So we are ruling out online examination and perhaps we'll go into computerized examination. What will that be? Well, it might be the use of gadgets in answering the examination. It might be the setting up of test centers or testing centers wherein the examiners will go there and take the examination. We still do not know, okay? Because uh, I included this because marami din mga tanong the, uh, dito sa computerized examination. Okay, so um, there's actually a task force, okay? There was actually a task force that was uh, created for this uh, way back in 2020. But, uh, you know, oh, we're, we're moving quite slow these days because of the pandemic. PRC is, you know, off and on because of a lot of positives in Moraita and PICC. So, um, hindi talaga umuusad ang project na to, but, uh, you know, the ones or the, the ones assigned to this are actually continuously evaluating what would be the best ways of doing this. Okay? So, that is something that uh, we can look forward to in the future. Okay, and the last topic that I would like to discuss, considering that this is um, a gathering of academicians is the accreditation of accounting teachers. And I would like to emphasize that uh, based on our based on our uh, inspection of schools, maraming schools, even the bigger ones, are uh, having accounting teachers who are not accredited. That fact is a violation of the CHED CMO because even for BSMA, BSIA, and BSAIS, if the person or if the teacher is teaching accounting, that person must be accredited with the Board of Accountancy. So much more for those teaching in BS Accountancy. Okay? So um, this is one of the things that we always... Take a look when we inspect 
schools or when we do school inspections. Of course, um, the reprimand will not be with us, okay? Because we are just the accrediting body, but the requirement is with CHED. So whatever results of our inspection will be, we will forward that to CHED for CHED to take care of what to do next, okay? So BOA will report CHED its findings during school inspections. Um, Nakakapagtataka lang kasi, no? it's quite surprising that there are about 525, okay, approximately 525 schools all over the country offering BS accountancy. And then if you will look at the number of accredited accounting teachers, there are only a handful. That means talagang may nagtuturo ng accounting na hindi naman accredited the Board of Accountants. Now, you might ask, uh, well, the procedure ngayon is very easy, di ba? In fact, I have some doubts whether it really is promoting a better teacher. That's why uh, I am requesting the NACPAE to review the accreditation procedures and requirements and to recommend to us what would be a better or if there is a better way of doing this, because our intention is to have quality teachers teach accounting anywhere in the country. Now, uh, kanina, sabi ni Mr. Lambino, uh, <laughs> ba, sir? No? Uh, sabi ni Mr. Lambino, nung pumasok ako sa Board of Accountancy, bumaba masyado yung passing percentage. At saka sinabi naman niya na hindi naman niya nag-umpisa sa akin. Di ba? Nag-umpisa yun noon pa. Okay? Bumaba ng bumaba. Of course, bumaba ng bumaba nung ako nang nakaupo doon. Okay? Ito lang ang masasabi ko sa inyo, sa, sa mga examiners. Bakit? Bakit uh, naging ganun? Okay? I was quite... Uh, you see, uh, I don't want to violate the law. <laughs> Ang nangyari kasi, marami na talagang examinees. I don't want also to cast doubts on what happened before. Okay? They, might, they, they are also credible results. But dito ngayon, um, during my time, okay, um, I would like, as what Mr. Lambino also said, uh, it is my policy na yung Karapat-dapat lang ang dapat magiging CPA. Okay. Um, it's, not, it's not good to know. May mga reports kasi akong narinig, may mga reports na nakarating sa akin na marami daw nung una, nung, I think, umabot yung passing percentage ng 40% plus, 40-30. Um, marami daw CPAs, maraming nagiging CPAs na hindi naman marunong. I got that from a lot of practitioners or people from the industry asking me why these people became CPAs na parang hindi naman marunong. I said, well, uh, kasi I think, uh, I'm not so sure if this is really the cause. Nung una kasi, um, Almost always, kung anong, kung anong nasa reviewer, yan din ang lalabas sa exam. Okay? Uh, that was really sad because ang nangyari, yung mga examinees nagme-memorize na lang ng question at saka yung answer. Sabi nga nila, pati yung kama at saka period na memorize na nila. Pati yung mga choices na memorize na nila. I don't think that will make up a good CPA. When I got into the board, I told the board members, prepare your examination. Make your own exam. If ever you will copy from the reviewers, change the scenario, change the move. Okay? Kaya nga, uh, you don't expect that ABC company in the reviewer will come out as ABC company or the figure will come out as is something like that, okay? So 
yan actually is one of the factors. Kasi kailangan natin yung understanding ninyo sa principles. Yung understanding ninyo sa concepts. Because if you do understand the principles and the concepts, hindi kayo mahihirapan na mag-answer kahit anong questions. Okay? It is actually the desire of the Board of Accountancy to have a high passing percentage. Hindi namin, hindi namin yan uh, sinasadya. Okay? Gusto namin magtataas yung passing percentage. Pero hindi kasi namin yan ginagawa. We are just reporting. Okay? Ang gumagawa niyan, ang mga examinees na kumuha ng exam. So, if you want to have a high passing percentage, guys, please do well. And again, the way to do well is to prepare seriously. Okay? Marami akong post na nakikita dyan sa Facebook kasi may Facebook account din tayo, di ba? Marami akong post na nakikita dyan sa mga chat groups ng accounting students. Nagsasabi, tinatamad na daw sila na mag-aral, yung mga ganun. E kung yan ang nangyari, your chance of passing would actually be quite slim. Okay? So, um, I think that would be all. But uh, at any rate, uh, I would also like, uh, I think, uh, we, Mr. Lambini also mentioned tomorrow's activity. Okay? Um, tomorrow, March 17, we will, we will be launching the uh, two years to centenary of the Philippine accountancy profession. You see, the Philippine accountancy profession said to be, was born on March 17, 1923. Okay, that was the approval of the, the act or of the law uh, creating the accountancy profession. March 17, 2023. So that tomorrow, it will be March 17, 2021. That is uh, two years going towards March 17, 2023. And in order to highlight this important milestone in our profession, we want to have a series of activities for two years until the final commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the profession on March 17, 2023. The affair tomorrow is not an affair of Akpasi, okay? The affair tomorrow is actually an affair that is initiated by the Board of Accountancy. Ginawa lang namin si Akpasi na parang event organizer. Kasi, pitul, ah, anim na lang kami, no? Anim na lang kami sa Board of Accountancy, wala kaming tao. <laughs> so, uh, kailangan namin ng tulong from whatever sector. So yung involvement ni ACPA si Bukas is just to organize. They are just assisting us in tomorrow's activity. That is why uh, tomorrow in the morning, we will have the formal launching of the two years to centenary. Our guest of honor will be His Excellency President Duterte. And uh, of course, uh, there is a learning session in the afternoon Dahil Akpasi ang assisting namin bukas, it will be a forum uh, on um, sponsored or uh, sponsored by Akpasi. That is the Commerce and Industry Sectoral Forum. Yung ibang sectors, meron din silang slots na nakaschedule, okay? Because this is a two-year-long celebration prior to the commemoration of the 100th anniversary. Tomorrow's activity is free of charge. Se boa ang nag-sponsor. Okay? Uh, this is free of charge, but only to the first 1,000 registrants. Because the Zoom link, the Zoom can only accommodate 1,000. Yung hindi na ma-accommodate sa Zoom, Doon na lang sa Facebook Live. E wala namang registration sa Facebook Live. No? So, uh, siyempre, libre naman yun. Kaya lang, 
yung first 1,000 na mag-register sa Zoom will earn 3 CPD credit units free. Okay? Free, courtesy of the Board of Accountancy. Okay? So thank you very much, guys. And I hope that I have shared with you good insights of, you know, um, the CIPALI and, of course, the accounting education in the country today. I would be very glad to answer whatever questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, so thank you to our Honorable Noe Kenyanola for that very informative talk. So may we go to our open forum. So for your questions, you can use the link uh, shared in our chat box uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom application. So to repeat our honorable speaker, just to react with some of his uh, uh, sharing, there's nothing certain, but we just have to make most of what is available to us, especially in relation to the upcoming certified public accountant licensure examination. So if I may react to some of uh, our honorable speaker's point. So remember that the, when the bill was released, when he was talking about some uh, board exam for other courses, it sprang a lot of or several questions in our minds. So we are very thankful for the current board for transitioning us with the board examination, aside from uh, the accountancy graduates and letting it be clear to us also. So we also take note that the new venues of the examination with emphasis to Rosales, Pangasinan, at the, as it is within our close proximity. And I strongly agree also with Honorable Noe that the exam is far from the exam I took uh, during uh, my time in MLQU several years back. Nevertheless, the students can only comply if they would want to take the CIPALE in such circumstances. So for the 13,000 examinees, be updated uh, from the PRC and of course uh, from, our, uh, from our board. We also, uh, we also wait for the updates for the refresher course. We take note also of the average passing percentage of 10% of the HEI, wherein the institution shall be strictly be conducting the required 24 units, which shall be embedded in the TOR, not in just a certificate. And in relation to syllabi and TOS, for the students who did not undergo, so let's be clear with this, everyone. So for those who did not undergo the senior high, uh, they will be subject to the updated TOS. So thank you very much, Sir Noe, for clarifying this. On our part, we also be able to communicate uh, clearly to our former students. And I also strongly agree on your sentiments, Sir Noe, that the students can endeavor in learning for uh, uh, learning uh, of the courses with assistance of the school. But nevertheless, the responsibility of learning, uh, learning the topics uh, solely rests upon him or her. So as uh, our honorable speaker said, don't take anything for granted. Examinees should have a working knowledge of all of the topics. And of course, uh, as, uh, as professional accountants, part of our ethical framework is integrity. So I strongly agree that for computerized examination, uh, it should take into consideration also the integrity of the result of the SIPALE. And lastly, of course, we wait for the recommendation of NACPAE on the accreditation of faculty teaching accounting subjects. It is also, it all, it all falls on us as academicians also to step up to improve the results of the examination. So it's not uh, as uh, Dean Lambino was saying also. So we appreciate the observance of, observation of Dean Lambino and affirmation of our board chairman that his sentiments that the board wants the national rating to be high as well. So we, so we now go to our questions. Yeah, so thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much to our honorable speaker. So let's now go to our, some, of, uh, some of the questions that our participants have given us. Yeah. So Bristol Joshua K from University of Luzon, so Regional Vice President for Academics, NFJPA, Region 1 CAR. So uh, he says, good day, sir. In your opinion, what are the factors that affect the declining national passing rate of the SIPALE? So once again, if I may repeat, so good day, sir. In your opinion, what are the factors that affect the declining passing rate of the CPA licensure examination? Okay. Um, yes, uh, I, I think I mentioned that in passing, but in order to emphasize once more, um, ganito kasi ang, ano, uh, we have really noticed the deterioration of the quality of students. Okay. 
For example, um, far and afar are quite easy subjects, no? Kasi ang daming, ang daming special, specialty is far and afar, right? But you know what? In the last October 2019, usually, yung passing percentage ng far and afar would reach something like 70 plus percent. Okay? Meaning to say, what I mean is 70, like 70 percent of the uh, 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 examinees taking the exam uh, pass far and apar. Okay? In the October 2019, that was the last examining, examination, right? Ang passing percentage ng far and apar was only something like 50%. So what do you conclude from there? Yung dalawang easy subjects, eh, kunti na lang ang kumasa. So that would mean that there is really a deterioration of the quality of students. Okay? Nakakapagtataka, dahil board exam na to, alam nyo ba na mayroon pang score na 15, 12, 18, Pero mga scores na ganyan. E sabi ko, nako, graduates na to, tapos ito pa yung score. E wala naman kaming magagawa dyan. Okay? Kasi uh, karamihan ng mga students nagtatanong din, Sir, talaga bang zero-based yun? Hindi ba, hindi ba plus 25? Hindi ba plus 30? Sino pang may nagsabi na plus 30? Di ba? E walang, walang ganyan. Di ba? Okay? Um, Way back in October 2018, that was the first examination that I administered. Uh, may nagtanong sa akin, sir, bakit yung score ko sa tax 29 lang? Hindi ba dapat 30 yun? Eh, kung kung gawin, na, gawin kong 30, ano mangyari sa'yo? Di ba? Okay? So, yun. Uh, I, I think that's the major reason. Talagang deterioration of the quality of students. Hindi naman siguro deterioration of intelligence or in intellectual capability kasi maski intellectual ka pa pag tinatamad kang mag-aral eh wala ka talaga magawa okay so yun um, just make sure that you are intelligent uh, ganito make sure that you are educated and intelligent okay kasi may you know those two are different kasi may mga educated na hindi naman intelligent by intelligent na hindi naman educated. So I think a combination of education and intelligence would really matter. Okay? So yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I strongly agree on that. Intelligence and education. So for our next question, so we have uh, Bani, uh, Ms. Banyaga Jasmine May, the Dean of University of Cordillera. So uh, her question is, when will BOA release the list of accredited universities to offer the refresher course? I think you mentioned, sir, that uh, University of Cordilleras was already approved. But yes, sir, how, how you answer the question? Po. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, University of Cordilleras is actually accreditation number three. Okay. Um, uh, the school belonged to the first three that we accredited way back in February. Um, you should be getting, you should be getting uh, a letter or the certificate is big. Ang problema kasi is, uh, you know, skeletal pa rin ang PRC sa PICC. Kasi uh, tumataas na naman ang cases. cases. Oh, no? Nakakabahala nga eh. Um, I don't know. Uh, we are really living in an uncertain world. Okay. Um, may mga cases sa PICC. Maraming cases sa Moraita. Okay? Um, so, I really don't know. But anyway, um, uh, Ma'am, I think you can... Sandali. Uh, where are uh, If you can... If you can... Uh, if you can search in the website, um, merong ano, the, the resolution is there. Okay? So based on that, you can already safely assume that you are accredited. My resolution talaga yan. Um, if you can actually text me or send me a private message uh, of your email address, I will email the resolution to you.
Okay, so thank you very much, sir, for that clarification. And then next question is um, from University of Luzon, Dean. So Dean uh, Renante Balocating, here is his question. When is the revised, so I think he's saying revised uh, CPA licensure examination syllabi going to be released by the PRC BOA? Thank you, sir. Yeah, um, yeah, that is for October 2022, okay? Because we do not want to change it before then, okay? So October 2022, Payan. We already gave you uh, some, I think last year, in one NACPAE event, we gave you the initial draft, okay? And that is majority of the contents there are already uh, final. Okay. Meron lang mga counting revisions. Of course, uh, we are um, contemplating that it should be released this year. But that will still be effective in October 2022. Okay, okay. okay. so thank you. thank you, sir. We'll take note of that. Uh, here's a question coming from me, sir. So, so we are nearing our centennial celebration of our profession, as you mentioned. So I am curious, sir. So what programs or events could we expect from the board in relation to Academy, sir. Yeah, um, we are giving a slot to Nakpae mm -hmm. in order to uh, ganito kasi yun, di ba? Uh, from the board, we commission, we commission the different sectors to plan for activities in their sectors. Mm -hmm. So we are actually commissioning the Nakpae to also plan out a series of activities that will be in conjunction with the Board of Accountancy uh, during the two-year period that we are actually uh, commemorating the centennial celebration of our profession. Okay, So it will be a collaboration between BOA and NACPAE. So yung mga suggestion kung ano talagang gawin natin will be coming from NACPAE. We, we have also our own plans, but that is on a general note. Pero... Ang sina ang tinanong mo kasi is, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. So we will be coordinating that with NACPAE because they will be the implementing arm uh, for all activities in the academy. Yes, sir. So thank you, sir. So we also, well, I, I'm also, you know, a, a, a member of several industries, then, too, sir. So we, I'll anticipate some of the programs of those respective uh, arms that you will be using, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, a several organization. And then lastly, sir, here is our, actually, this is our last question, sir, from um, Ramos Rodante from Northwestern University. So he says here, so actually there's two questions. Uh, let me read the first question. So there have been feedback from CPA licensure examination takers in the past that some questions were invalidated. So are new multiple choice questions subject to quality assurance, such as pre-trial before they are included in the test bank? So that's the first question. And then the second question is, do you publish an item analysis of past examination, say five to five, uh, three to five examinations to determine whether the questions may be reused or rewritten or disregarded and give an idea to accounting educators where they need to exert more effort. Okay. Right. That's, that's actually our last question, po, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, on the first one, ano, ano yung first one? Uh, there have been feedback, uh, na in, yung questions that are invalidated, sir. And then um, he's asked, okay, yeah. say, go ahead, sir. Okay, um, considering uh, that we have to uh, promote integrity of our examination, uh, we do conduct what we call a peer review of the examination questions. The peer review will be conducted among the board members. Okay. Now, ngayon, um, ini-encode yan sa test bank. Now, the test bank is a general, uh, it uses general software. Um, when the test questions will be extracted, uh, minsan, uh, you know, especially like, I said, that, that's a test bank for all the professions, no? So it's not actually a test bank that is really designed for accountancy. 
minsan pag uh, na-extract na yung question at saka na-print, merong mga uh, especially like uh, for those uh, the um, yung figures that are supposed to appear in columns parang hindi na magiging columns okay so may mga may mga uh, may mga words at so may mga figures na talagang nagkaka ano na uh, you know it's not in their proper places that's why uh, in fact we need to edit them we need to edit them in such a manner that it should appear as is but because of the limited time we may not be able to edit all of them Okay. So, meron talagang questions na lalabas. May, may mga questions na lalabas na ano, um, talagang faulty. Uh, however, uh, we have item analysis. That's the second question, right? We have item analysis and the purpose of item analysis is to check whether the question is valid or kasi meron din questions the question is correct. However, it might be confusing. Okay? So, if that is the case, uh, that is considered an invalid question, right? Yung, mga, yung talagang faulty question, ang nangyayari doon, ginawa na yung bonus. So, we don't expect them to answer that. Yung mga, quest, yung mga questions na parang faulty dahil parang confusing, uh, we analyze it carefully kung talagang ano ba, and then we also give that as a bonus. Okay? Uh, how do we give that as a bonus? Let's say, for example, there are 70 items. Then we delete two items there. Then the divisor would only be 68. Okay? So instead of putting a check mark, kasi <laughs> mahirap naman yung iche check yan. So uh, instead of the divisor being 70, kasi 70 item na yan, the divisor would only be 68. That is actively giving bonus to two questions. Okay. Now, on the second question, uh, he talks about the five questions. Kasi, um, sa PRC law or sa PRC rule, we are not allowed to give out the examination questions. However, I think the dean can uh, request from PRC, sample questions, okay? And they are given five questions. Five questions at random, yun, no? um, So that they, they can see, you know, what comes out. But that's only five out of 70, five out of 100, okay? Mm -hmm. Just to give them an idea of what came out. Now, uh, on the matter of how do you improve, you can actually request as well the scores of your graduates in all the subjects. Okay? You can, you can request the scores of your graduates. Lang, no? uh, like, for example, if you are, uh, if you are uh, operating a review center in your university, of course, there will be students from other schools, no? You cannot ask for their scores, okay? Kasi ang inaano natin, ang mga estudyante mo, hindi yung estudyante sa ibang, ibang schools. You can ask for the scores of your students in all the subjects. So what would be the use of that? You can actually determine where you are weak. Now, in most cases, talaga, and weakness is in tax and RFBT. Right? Bakit ba? Talagang since time immemorial, yan naman talaga ang problema. Okay? I'm not so sure, but, uh, you know, I must siguro makonclude natin baka sa instructions. Okay? Uh, that is why I even propose sa, sa ano natin, sa PQF, of course, this is not the subject matter for the day, but yung PQF kasi, yung Philippine Qualification Framework, right? If you know that. I think you know that already. Uh, yung Philippine Qualification Framework, 
will give you a certification on a certain topic. So, um, uh, what I suggested to the academy is that can we give a certification per subject expertise? Na, like for example, certified teacher in auditing, certified teacher in taxation, sila lang ang may karapatan na magturo ng taxation pag certified ka talaga dyan. Eh, I don't know um, if it's happening in your school, but my observation is maraming nagtuturo ng taxation na parang sumasabay lang sa estudyante na nag-aral ng taxation kasi walang gustong tumanggap ng load na taxation napipilitan lang siya. I, I hope that's not happening in your school. <laughs> o, tumatawa kayo. Baka, baka, baka tama yun. Ha? Uh, that's not the way it should be, right? Okay? So, siguro, dyan tayo uh, mag-i-improve. Okay? Yung sa RFBT, yung sabi ko sa mga schools na namit ko, sabi ko yung RFBT ninyo, talagang hahanap kayo ng lawyer. Hindi naman kailangan lawyer. Kasi ang kumukuha niyan, pang CPA lang. A CPA lawyer would actually be very good. But a pure lawyer may not actually have the uh, feel of how it is in the CPA board exam. Sabi namin, hindi naman kailangan na magturo ng law ay lawyer. CPA is already okay for as long as he has subject expertise. So, yan ang ano natin. Okay, for those uh, deans and program chairs, you divide, okay, or you, you classify your teachers according to subject expertise, develop them according to subject expertise, and then let them teach the subject na kahit nakapikit ang mata nila, eh talagang alam nila yung subject. Di ba? Because the teacher must actually be well ahead of the students hindi yung sumasabay na nag-aaral. Huh? Okay? So I hope uh, that would be a good input to for the academicians. Okay? Yes, yes of course. Uh, that's a wonderful input po, sir. Yeah, and so thank you. Go, yes. go ahead, sir. As I've said, I've been with the academy for, for a long, long time. Okay? I've been with the academy for 40 years. No? 40 years. So, Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a sense, sir, you're still connected with the academy because of the, the CPA licensure examination. But nevertheless, thank you very much for all of the input uh, to our honorable resource speaker, Noe Kinyanola. I hope that with, that helps, okay? Yes, sir. Indeed, it helps. Yeah. So, so that ends our open forum. So thank you to all who submitted their questions now to award the certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker. May I request Madam Maria Lourdes Ake, our PICPA Pangasinan Chapter President, in the awarding. Let me read the certificate. Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Pangasinan Chapter, awards the Certificate of Appreciation to Honorable Noe Quinanola, Chairman, Professional Regulatory Board of Accountancy, in grateful recognition of his presence as guest of honor and resource speaker, during the Meet the BOA Chair webinar on accountancy education updates conducted on the 16th of March, 2021 via Zoom, signed by yours truly, Maria Lourdes Ake, President, Pangasinan Chapter, Fiscal Year 2020 and 2021. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We, indeed, we are so grateful for all of their input. Yeah. Yeah. So, being, you with, being with you guys, okay? Uh, hindi talaga ko magsasawa na ano, especially for the academicians. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, po. So for everyone, just a reminder to accomplish the evaluation of, a, of our webinar, which was shared in our Zoom chat box. And before we end the program, may I request everyone to open their cameras, of course. Uh, so it's time for our picture taking. So with your biggest smile, we take a picture. Yeah, so... So I'll be counting one, two, three, and then we have several partic participants. So bejo marami. So I'll divide it into three na lang. So for our photographer, so 
for everyone, please smile. So uh, for our first set, one, two, three. I'm Rosen, give us a cue. And then yes, for, man. Sir so, Luigi, pa off po yung ano. Yes. And so for our second batch, so once again, I'll count one to three. So one, two, three, smile. And, and then for our last batch, kasi medyo marami tayo sa ating, uh, ating Zoom. So for our last batch, one, so let me count once again. One, two, and three. So smile. Ayan. So thank you very much. So once again, uh, for our evaluation, it is shared in our uh, shared in our chat box in our Zoom. So so once again, may I request our dear and so our dear Pikpa Pangasinan Chapter President Maria Lourdes Ake for our closing remark. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the road to becoming a CPA is indeed long and arduous. At this time, it has even become more challenging. To our dear students, our would-be CPAs who are counting to 15,000 already registered for the upcoming uh, board exams, mentors, the road ahead is indeed daunting. But we have to keep in mind the words of inspiration from our speakers today. Thank you very much, moms, mom and sirs, for your um, messages. And then also to Sir Noe, who gave everyone the latest updates. Thank you, sir, for your updates and insights and suggestions. I kept in mind, sir, yung sinabi po ninyo minsan sa meeting namin mga chapter presidents that webinars have to be free. So free webinar po tayo. <laughs> thank you, sir. And then, of course, I also thank the deans of the various universities who introduced our guests earlier. Uh, thank you very much. It was very nice. It was a pleasure interacting with all of you. Um, uh, they, they were once also PICPA or uh, currently PICPA officers. Thank you for gracing the occasion. But most importantly, I would like to thank Dean Renante, Renante Balocatin, the past, a past president of PICPA Pangasinan, for spearheading this event. He was the brainchild of this project. And to his team, who made this all possible to Sir Jaram Tolentino, Rose Ann Paramio, Sir Gerard Carpizo, who themselves are brilliant accountancy professors. And of course, to our IT, uh, Sunny, thank you very much. To everybody who attended this webinar via Zoom and Facebook Live, it has been the pleasure of Pikpa Pangasinan and myself uh, personally to have been able to share this morning with all of you. We sincerely hope that you have been enlightened and inspired by the people who shared their wisdom and updates this morning. Thank you and have a good day ahead. And so thank you very much, Ma'am Malu. And that concludes our webinar for today. So uh, there's many still one more. Okay. I, think, I think there's one more uh, uh, ahead, message here from Dean Ray. Evaluation form will be emailed within the day and then certificates will be sent after accomplishing the evaluation. Certificates yes, of the well. students will be sent to the NFJPA Regional Council within the week. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very Have much. Have a good so day, everybody. Yes, yeah, so many thanks also to Dean Renante, the rest of the team, to the various sponsors. Congratulations for a successful event. So we'd like to thank also the school's officials, our guest speakers, the participants in the live webinar via Zoom, and of course, our live viewers in Facebook. So reminders also uh, on the evaluation, which was said by Mam Malu. So indeed, the accountancy profession, we are rising in solidarity amidst challenging times. Again, once again, good morning. This has been your moderator and MC Gerard Carpizo signing off. So farewell, everyone. Bye -bye. <laughs>
Tiene 